something I do see if you were to sort of looking for that next step, looking for that sort of pay rise and, and looking to progress as treasury professionals. There are absolutely things that uh, that companies have, have taken, that, you know, really take a look at and prioritize very much. For instance, you know, qualifications, AT, ACT examinations, I think are, you know, invaluable. I always encourage candidates to do it. Uh, it's a brilliant kind of concrete, something that you can have on your CV. Like I say, it just really shows that, you know, you are qualified, you do know what you're talking about. And, you know, it will make you more employable. Quite frankly, it, it means you can charge people a little bit more for your services. So, you know, as far as I'm concerned, it's a, it's a win-win. Now, I do appreciate, you know, in a lot of cases, these exams are quite expensive to take. You know, I believe companies do offer subsidiaries for this and, you know, allowing people to, to, to take uh, take the exams on, on the company's behalf, which is which is really good. And I definitely encourage companies to add that to, to, to packages, especially at a, at a junior level. The idea of sort of study support is absolutely huge and very valued in the, in the market at a junior level at the moment. And what you're actually seeing is even though, you know, in the past, you'd have probably seen if a company was offering some kind of remote flexibility, especially if someone was starting a new job, that that would be factored into the overall kind of salary that they would be offered um, and the overall package. Whereas now, you know, we, we're looking at, we take treasury managers as a threshold, depending on where people are based in the UK. I and mean, we've seen in, in the salary results, as we've got at the moment, that can range from your, your low 50s, 50k end, all the way up to a senior treasury manager up to potentially over, over 90. Although in some companies, we look at that as a head of treasury kind of level I think ultimately it's not it's no longer a factor of oh you're working from home so the, the salary we'd offer off the bat would be reduced because you know we're factoring in we're not gonna have to there's gonna be less travel time you're not gonna be spending money on petrol the thing is a, a 60k job I imagine you know a couple of years back to what it is now is still the same despite the fact that you're not having to travel in so really if you look at it that way there is that there is that benefit and companies are going to request that people are on site or would like people on site five days a week unless it's you know you live in London and it's and it's you know jumping on on, on a couple tube stations the thing is it's still at that it's still at that value you know you're not going to be undercut because of the fact you're you're going to be working remotely so i think in that regard yeah I mean, there's definitely been an increase indirectly because of that but it, it's very competitive you know because that's standard it's no longer almost a benefit to go you can work two days from home anymore because it's almost expected <laughs> and i think that's 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 the significant difference in terms of that and how that affects the salaries which like i say haven't they might i think they moved up slightly in terms of where they're at but ultimately it, they, they haven't gone down at all given the fact that people can work from home two, three, four days a week. While salary, especially in Europe, still remains quite a focal point, one of the main questions I get is what's the company's policy post-COVID on remote working? And again, I've had to advise clients that, you know, it does actually heavily weigh on candidates' decisions about whether or not they're going to pursue that job opportunity. Sometimes I'm finding above what the salary is and I think I suppose the buzzwords at the moment is that people people are expecting companies to have a hybrid solution so you know they want candidates want to have that blend of office and home-based working and I think the challenges that businesses are having this year and I think will continue into next year is whether or not they offer that freedom and I think it's very difficult because when you've got Gen Z if we can talk about that that workforce population so more at the sort of treasury analyst level have found working from home quite difficult because they like that social interaction it's finding that balance, whereas people that have got families and things like that have enjoyed having the working from home mm. element. So I think I did a quite a bit of research about it and, it and it's been revealed that 30% of the global workforce will be working from home on multiple days by the end of mm. this year. And that will increase over the next sort of three years to 70%. Yeah. So my advice to any business is that they've got to embrace this new trend of hybrid working because failure to do it can predict unwanted challenges in recruitment. 